Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. And this morning, I'd like to capture my, my thoughts with unkept promises. Unkept promises. You know, sometimes when we're in trouble and when we're in, 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 in all sorts of things, negative things happening around us and all those and troubling events happening in our lives, sometimes we will cry out to God and make some interesting promises. God, you know, if you deliver me, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do that, I'll do that. You know, I mean, we make those kind of interesting promises. And I, and I, and I understand. I mean, uh, desperate times calls for desperate measures. So sometimes we throw those promises at God. God, if I will, you know. And, and I mean, sometimes you'll be very, very surprised. I mean, desperation makes us make promises. Yeah, Anna walked into the temple of God, you get it, and she was desperate for a child. So she said, God, you give me a child, you give me a son, and I'll give you a priest. That's what she was saying. Now, but there are some things that when we do, they will t they'll, they'll be there. They are like perpetual memorial, just an agreement between you and God, God and you. And in Genesis chapter 28, especially from verse 20 onwards, I see a very powerful story over there. Now, Jacob, you remember, Jacob had a, a powerful visitation when he got to Bethel. You know, he was there and then he saw the heavens opened. And after the heavens opened, God spoke with a voice and he saw angels ascending and descending. And when Jacob woke up from that, he said, how dreadful was this place? God was here and I didn't even know it. Then God, Jacob made a promise. He said, God, I'm walking into the unknown. I'm walking into a place I've never been before. I don't know how the future is going to be like. I don't know what's going to happen. Then he said, God, if you look after me and if you take care of me and all those things, I promise you I will do this. But, you know, Jacob had gone all his way and all the things that Jacob had done. But then in, 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 in Genesis 28, at one point, then God says to him, go back to Bethel. Go back to Bethel. And I'm wondering, why should he go back to Bethel? There are many things there. One of them is that, listen, at Bethel, why would God say that? At Bethel, you made a promise. Have you kept that promise? So he said, go back to where you made that promise. Be reminded of the promises you made. Bethel is not just a geographical location. Je Bethel is also a covenant place. It's a covenant location. You made a covenant with me. You told me you would do this for me. Go back to Bethel. All throughout your life, I have not seen that. So God is telling Jacob, you go back to Bethel. I'm reminding you of the promises that you made. And you said, if I should do this, I made promises to you. You also made promises to you. I made promises to look after you, to multiply you, to increase you, and to make sure that you look good, to make sure that, boy, you, you, you're really blessed. And you also made a promise. And God said, now you go back there and remember what you said. Go back there and remember what you said. It's so sad sometimes in desperation, we throw out the promises to God like nobody's business. We're so quick to make promises. Many a times when we receive what we need from God, forget about him. Forget about him. And then we go our way to do what we want to do. That's all right with God. But remember, you may promise. Now, for me, I take it simply like this. You were in trouble the very first time. You came to me, made promises. I helped you. Then you didn't keep your promise. Then the next time you're in trouble, you are running to me again for me to... No. The next time you come and you make promises to me, I'm going to look at you with a different eye. I'm going to say, this guy, in trouble, he will scream my name. Out of trouble, and make promises. Out of trouble, forgets. So you know what I, what I always say? But thank God, I am not God. So he's not like me. But he has a long, messy rope. <laughs> you know, but God said to uh, uh, Jacob, go back to Bethel. Let's go back to the roots. Let's go back to the fundamentals. Let's go back to the promises you made. Let's go back to them. Go back to Bethel. Well, I hope that God will not be walking, knocking on our doors, reminding us of promises that we've made that we have not kept. And we made those promises in desperate moments. And when the tide turned and the sun began to shine, we forgot about him. I hope God doesn't come knocking on our door and ask us to go back to Bethel. That's not a pleasant thing to do. 
It speaks of ingratitude. It speaks of a covenant breaker, one who is not ready to honor his or her word, and one who is not ready to honor covenant. So like I'll say to you, go back to Bethel. Keep, endeavor to keep the unkept promises. See you later.